Well, hello, my name is Chris Sorby, and now we're going to do another gear video today. It's an upgrade to the old one since it's been over a year and a half since the last one. And uh, we're going to talk about practicality, we're going to talk about gear, how to pack them, what to take, what not to take, and what works and what doesn't. And this is from my own experience or other people's experiences, and uh, I hope you enjoy it and find it informative. Um, the main thing that weigh a lot and um, take a lot of room are electronics. They're the most expensive thing that you can take with you and they're the most security risk actually. That's the only reason that I have locks and chains on everything because of my electronics. But um, if you're taking a trip of a lifetime, you're gonna have to have cameras, you're gonna have to have good laptops for editing videos, editing pictures and everything yet. And um, you can't skip it, really you can't do that. First I started this trip, I started with a big laptop and um, it was it was big, it was heavy, and it wasn't even too fast. It was two years ago, and um, so I traded it. I traded it and I got myself a small laptop, which is a... Uh, it's a 10 inch HP. It's a perfect laptop for traveling, for anything you want to do with it, except doing anything that needs graphical capacity. You won't do that for you. Um, for sending emails, for watching movies, for you name it, it does it for you. But if you need to edit any pictures, if you need to edit any videos, this laptop is not gonna cut it. It's not gonna do it for you. I tried it for two years, agonizing two years, and it didn't do it for me. So it was a time to upgrade, and um, I got myself a bigger one. This laptop does everything for me. I can do everything on this laptop, and it has its drawbacks. It's heavy, it's big, the battery doesn't last as long, but um, there's no other way around it. So that goes the laptops. Okay. Another little thing that I take with me is called Magic Jack. Um, a lot of you are familiar with Skype, which is pretty much the same thing. It's a voice over IP telephone. And uh, the good thing about a Magic Jack, you can actually hook up a telephone to it and you can use it. The voice clarity is not bad, it's not excellent, but uh, it's just the same as Skype. As long as you have an internet connection, you have a phone. And the good thing about this is you get a free phone number with it. You can use it anywhere in the world that you go to. And um, when people call you, it records the message and it emails the message to you. And um, it's been a lifesaver for $40 or I don't know, any store that you can buy it. Um, for one year and the year after that, it's only $20 a year, which is a perfect thing to take if you're gonna call back home all the time. This is the way to go. Using a cell phone is just going to be too expensive and uh, it's not practical. Beside the magic jack, uh, another thing that I take with me for calling inside country is a cell phone. And uh, cell phones in the United States usually they don't take SIM cards, but uh, these are GSM cell phones. Um, in the US, I think AT&T, T-Mobile, you know, some some of these you know companies they offer you know GSM services and they do take SIM cards and. Um, it doesn't matter if it's unlocked or not, as soon as you leave the country, anywhere you go, they unlock it for you for $5. And uh, that, that's not a big deal. What you can do is that you can buy the SIM cards and uh, put it in the SIM cards. Like in right now in Argentina, for SIM cards, I think it was like $5 and you can charge it for $10 and you can talk for half an hour. And uh, not that I have too many people in Argentina to talk with, but uh, it's good for emergency if you need to call the police, fire department or anything, you know, call the ambulance or anything. It comes in handy. Wi-Fi is not really big in outside of the United States. Um, Sure, you know, in Europe, you know, other places there is, but in South America, you'd be lucky if you find the internet to begin with, you know, let alone Wi-Fi. So, um, Cat5 cable, always have that with you. At hotels or places that you go to, they usually have a hardwire um, internet, but they don't have Wi-Fi, so you can use this. And uh, another good thing is when you use a Cat5, you have a much faster connection than, than Wi-Fi. So, it doesn't weigh anything, it's small, and it just fits everywhere. Take it with you. Besides laptops, I need photography equipment and um, videography equipment. Um, video camera, I'm recording with it right now, so I can't really show you that. But um, I have a small camera, which I wear around my neck for shots that I need to take right away on a bike and, you know, while riding or doing something like that. I dropped this camera a million times and still amazingly works. And um, it's not very expensive, so I don't care about it. And uh, the quality is not bad. That's my small camera. Then I have 
Then I have the B camera. This one uh, is a professional camera. It's, um, it weighs a lot more than that, again. But if you need to take good pictures, if you need to remember your trip for the rest of your life, you don't want to take a picture with your cell phone. And um, this is the one that's going to do it for me. And um, I take a minimum of two lenses with me, one telephoto lens and uh, one wide angle lens and uh, portrait lens that I have here. And um, they pretty much cover everything that I need to do here. And um, that's as far as the camera goes. And of course, I take extra batteries with me. I'll always charge them anytime that I find electricity somewhere. I always charge these and uh, have them as a backup. With all the pictures and the video that you're gonna take, you're gonna have to have a place to store them. Most, you know, modern laptops, they have 500 gigabytes, you know, I don't know, one terabyte uh, hard drive. But it's not the hard drive that is the issue here, it's, it's redundancy. If you put everything on one laptop and that laptop gets stolen or breaks, you lose everything. What I do, um, before that I used to have, you know, two uh, external hard drives, but since now I have two laptops with me, I copy everything to all three devices. One on a big laptop, one on one side on a small laptop, and another copy, including all the originals and everything else goes on a small hard drive like this. This is uh, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and um, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of pictures and videos to actually fill this up. And if you do fill it up, you can always, it's just as small, it's called My Passport, WD, uh, it's the Western Digital My Passport. You can always send it back home and just buy another one and keep going. They're inexpensive, they're $70, $80, and uh, they last quite a while, and um, they're very good quality. I left most of the cables out of here, you know, so I don't make a mess here. But uh, there's an the example of, you know, how I carry the cables. So this is a charger for the, for the Pentax camera. And um, the, it's a 12 volt charger that I can charge it on a bike. Um, video out and stuff like that. And of course, I have an extension cord here for hooking up two or three different um, plugs at the same time you know when you're sitting in a hostel or something and everybody crowds one plug and you, you need to you know split that up um, so I always take extension cord with me and it comes in handy of course with all these electronics you're gonna need to charge them and uh, how to charge them you're gonna need a power converter it's not a power converter really it doesn't convert the electricity to you know different voltage or anything what it does it, it converts the different plugs that you need for different countries, Australian, uh, Australian, New Zealand, Europe, UK, and United States. And they all have different plugs and they all, you know, it's just, just a jumble of mess. So without this thing, you're gonna be lost. Get yourself one of these things. It's, I think it's like seven or eight dollars and uh, it's very small and it's practical. The best hundred dollars I ever spent in my life was a GPS. This thing is a lifesaver. If you're traveling outside of a country or, you know, even inside a country, you can't beat that. You can't really beat that. I always was a big fan of hard maps and I still don't go anywhere without them. But hard maps can only get you, you know, so far. If you're lost, truly lost, and you don't know where you are and you don't know the language, um, this is the easiest way to get out. Get yourself a GPS. So you can't really prepare yourself for disasters, but you can take measures, you know, to make it better. So, um, first aid kit. This is not a common first aid kit that you can buy. It's, I actually had to make it up myself. For pills, um, this is what I learned the hard way. Um, you can buy all your pills in the United States if you have insurance. Otherwise, don't spend your heart and money in the United States because you're gonna find all these pills outside of a country anywhere you go for half the price. Um, I put them all inside of one box. These are malaria pills, I don't even take them. And, um, what I do, I usually put a little toilet paper or a little cotton swab on top of them so that they don't break. And um, I have pills for diarrhea, I have pills for, you know, infections, for pain, all kinds of stuff. These are antibiotics, injections and stuff like that. And um, it's just a small version that you can take with you. We're gonna get the clothes and uh, sleeping bags and tents and stuff. Um, right here, what I have, um, this is a helmet bag. Any bag would work. I usually keep my rain gear. Um, 
face mask for cold days. Hat. Uh, ski gloves, and I do take two pairs of ski gloves with me. And um, when it gets cold and when it gets wet, the only thing that is going to make a difference is having you know warm, warm clothes. And um, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Um, I have two ski gloves with me, and I have two pair of leather gloves with me for riding on the fair weather. And um, these right here. And this is mostly just you know winter gear that it goes in here. Rest of my gear, you know, just goes inside a, a small dry bag, just t-shirts, underwear, and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna open that here, but. Uh, Basically, it's two t-shirts, a couple of underwear, you know, another pair of pants, and um, anything that you need. Always remember, you can buy another thing anywhere else in the world, so don't load yourself up for a million pair of pants and a million shirts, you know, to take with you. If something goes missing or something gets ripped, you can go to the second-hand store for 50 cents and buy another t-shirt, it's not a big deal. Sleeping bag, I uh, take a minus 30 degrees of sleeping bag with me, and um, there's a good reason for that. If it's hot, I'm not gonna sleep inside the sleeping bag anyway. But if it's cold, I need something warm. And um, to take it 40 degrees or 50 degrees, you know, for it to be lighter, two pounds or three pounds, it's just not practical for me. Um, if it's cold, you're gonna need it. So take it with you. Another thing that I take with me is a tarp. Um, comes in handy if you don't want to pitch a tent, you want to just pitch a tarp on the top of your head so you don't get rained on or anything, just sit under it, whatever. Or you can put it under your tent, it's a much better footprint than a footprint that you can buy for a tent, they don't last long. A lot of people take a Thermarest sleeping pad with them, you know, the kind of inflatable one. Um, I'm not a big fan of that and my experience comes in two forms. I've been in a lot of harsh conditions, high mountains, and I know one thing, if something can fail, will fail. I don't like to sleep on something that it has air in it, that it gets punctured. It's heavier than a, you know than traditional sleeping pads, and um, it's just pain in the ass. More expensive too, to say it. This is a closed cell foam. You can buy it anywhere in the world. If it goes bad, you can buy another one for five dollars, six dollars, whatever. But uh, they have a much better insulation value. They're a lot more comfortable and uh, much lighter. And you can use it for a multitude of things. If you break your leg, you can, I don't know, wrap it around your leg and walk out with it. Uh, you can cut it out, sit on it. You can do anything you want with it. Now, tents. Um, a lot of people, you know, take a BB sack with them. They sleep in it, I guess. I don't, I don't know how to do it, but uh, I'm not a very claustrophobic person. But I, I just can't see myself, you know, sleeping in, this, in a BB sack. The reason for that is, you know, Believe me, you're gonna have a hard enough time on the road all day, 15, 16 hours of riding. And the last thing that you want is to sleep somewhere that you're not gonna be comfortable. Take a good tent with you. I have a four season mountaineering tent here with me. It's bigger than most tents that you would see, but it's a bomb shelter. It will protect anything. There's no wind coming in. There's no wind ripping it out or snow or rain or anything else. And it's comfortable. It's a two person tent. I can fit all of my gear inside of it. I don't have to worry about anything outside to get wet or get stolen. I bring everything inside and you actually have room to wiggle around. Take a good tent with you because if it starts raining for four days, five days that you can't go anywhere, which has happened to me in Canada and Alaska, your tent is going to become your house and if you're taking an extended trip like I'm doing the tent is your house skipping on a, on, a, on a tent is not a good idea buy the best tent that you can afford and um, you're gonna be happy with it I promise you that I always have to you know find ways to save money because um, I'm gonna be on the road for five years two years already gone so three more years and uh, Every $10 haircut that I go, that I save, is, is just a little bit of money. So what I do, I take a small haircut thing with me, and um, I give myself a haircut the first couple of times. I mess it up pretty bad, and I have to shave my head, but uh, you get used to it. There it is, it's small and it's very light. And um, what I do, I can run it on 12 volt on a bike, or I can just you know hook it up to 220, 110, or whatever, and just use it as wherever I go. Okay, toiletry stuff, they all go inside another bag. Um, this 
always take a you know shaving cream with me this is my only luxury that i have i i like shaving with shaving cream so i take it with me but it's just a small bottle uh, a small mirror for shaving or i usually shave but in a motorcycle mirror if it's if it's nice outside uh, cologne shampoo sunblock uh, razor toothpaste and stuff like that you know just a small i put them inside of one bag and um q-tips i put them inside a pill bottle to take with me doesn't weigh way much and uh, everything is in one bag here's the tank bag that i have uh this is a giant tank bag it opens up all the way up to here but i barely ever use it that way i usually keep the stuff that i need regularly in, inside um knife it's a giant knife but i like it oops um toilet paper if the duty calls you have to go uh, dictionary um, passports um, more documents for the bike um, journal if you're a writer here um, headlamps I got two and just the smallest stuff and other knickknacks and my camera and everything goes inside of here what I do take with me a good amount of it are tools um, anything that I can fix the bike on the fly on the go and um, I got everything that I would ever need to swap an engine, which I just did, and uh, everything fits inside of that box. It looks overloaded actually, but I was just working on the bike and I uh, just shoved everything on top here. But everything do fit inside of that box, except this. Here we got spark plugs, a spare spark plugs, tube of silicone, it will come handy for you know rainy days and everything. I had to seal every lens on the bike for the water not to go in. I have a, a small um, jumper cable extra wire for you know doing electrical work on a bike um, this is a three-in-one oil I'm just gonna leave it here um, brake fluid oil this is a helmet spray it eliminates odor and uh, if you ride long hours you know in, in humid weather your helmet is gonna start to stink really really bad it doesn't weigh much and um, it's good to have it here WD-40 um, soldering iron um, for you know soldering all the connections and everything this bag right here I take a small amount of bolts nuts and everything else with me for anything that fails I always have a spare of some sort that I can get back on the road again um, zip ties and you know fuses and stuff like that let's talk about tires here um, it doesn't matter what kind of motorcycle you ride in it can be a $40,000 motorcycle or I don't know $500 Chinese 125cc one fact is that you will have flat tires um, for touring this is my recommendation and I swear by it it doesn't matter if you have a tubeless tire or a tube top tire put a tube in it tube is a lot cheaper to fix it's easy to fix and you can fix it everywhere if you keep plugging your tires your tubeless tires you're compromising the integrity with each plug that you're putting inside your tire and after two or three plugs I wouldn't want to be riding that motorcycle but a tube you can always take it out patch it put it back in and it doesn't do any damage to the structure of your tire it's the best way to do it it's the best way to go and uh, it doesn't matter what the manufacturer tells you that you know that if you put a tube in a tubeless tire it's gonna heat up it's gonna blow up never had it happen to me never heard anyone that it happened to them and um, it's just a myth use a tube in a tubeless tire and call it good right here we have the tire gauge I have a pump um, uses 12 volt I have a 12 volt outlet on a bike that I can use it with it's a lot easier than taking a bicycle pump with you it takes five hours just to put 10 psi back in a bike um, another thing that I take with me is a flare gun this is the closest thing that you can have to a firearm without breaking any law in any country and um, don't be fooled by the orange color of it it can kill somebody for you easily it's a 12 gauge and uh, it will burn for 12 or 13 seconds and uh, it will do some serious damage I use it mostly for protection I never had to use it thankfully but uh, it's good to have something like that beside a knife that you can actually shoot someone 10 feet away rather than you know being too close to you so this I think 35 or 40 dollars and they sell it everywhere get yourself one all right another thing that I always take with me is my axe and um, it comes in handy everywhere you go for chopping wood for defending yourself or for anything really and um, it doesn't weigh a lot this is this this is a Fisker the handle is hollow it's not a wood handle it's a fiberglass handle and in their commercial actually they run it over with a tractor it doesn't break and um, it's a very nice axe uh, it holds the edge really really good and um, I've been very happy with it and I have you know multitude of axes from them 
and I'm not advertising for them, but you know, they do make good product. Another thing that I have, small grill for making steaks on the road. If you like cooking, take one with you, doesn't weigh anything. And the uh, most controversial thing that I have on the bike is cast iron skillet, it weighs about 10 pounds. And uh, I like cooking, and uh, I like to cook everywhere, and I like to cook on fire. And uh, cast iron skillet is the only way to go. It lasts you a lifetime, and everything tastes better in it. So you just gotta make your decision and make your compromise. If you don't have room for it, don't take it. You know, take whatever you want, but I do. If you're a military man, you already know what this is. And um, if you're not, it's called Triaxon. It's a fuel tablet for heating meals and stuff. And um, they're amazing fire starters. They're very cheap. You can buy them anywhere in the United States. You go to surplus stores and um, I think, you know, they're dollar for three pack or something. And I usually cut this in three small sections or four small sections. And I use just a small piece of it. But uh, it burns in snow, it burns underwater, not underwater, you know, under rain and everything. But uh, uh, it makes a difference if you need to make a fire somewhere to cook some meal or something and it's rainy and it's crappy outside, have some of this with you. For cooking gear, uh, this is a thermos that I use for uh, making soups, teas and stuff like that. It doesn't have any glass in it, it's insulated, but uh, it's a stainless steel. And this is a little bulky, bulky and a little heavy, but uh, this is a luxury that you can have. If you have room, room for it, just take it with you. Um, a small cup, spork, um, just the soup that I usually make inside the thermos, and, uh, and a plastic plate. First of the cooking gear, um, Ziploc bag. I usually marinate meat and stuff in there. And um, the leftover food or anything that you want to take with you, you can put them inside and put them inside of one of your boxes and you can eat it later. Um, another cup. My stove, which is already in, inside in other videos, these really haven't changed. It's an Optimus Prime stove. Um, pots and pans and stuff, and a fire starter, another spoon, and tea and sugar and stuff like that. Everything goes inside of this box, and it stays out of the way. Spices. Um, spices are smelly. And if you don't put them in a, in a box like this, they're gonna stink to high heaven after a couple of months. What I do, I put them in inside a waterproof box, not that the water is gonna get in it, as I just don't want the smell needle to go all over my clothes and everything. I label everything, it's just a small version of everything that I need, put them in here and take them with me. And these boxes are very durable, I think Walmart sells this for seven or eight dollars a piece. I have a smaller one, smaller box that I keep the rest of my stuff in there here's a another cell phone that I have um, light bulbs anything that I don't want it to break I usually keep in a small box like this it's a very small cooler and um, I usually keep meat in it and everything we all hold the ice for one day and keeps everything cool and um, for the end of the day I usually buy my meat and everything and now uh, Cook my meal, if I have anything left over, I'll just put them inside a cooler and take them with you for the next day. It folds really, really small and doesn't weigh a lot. Um, pledge, it cleans everything. I use it for the, for the paint, I use it for the seat, I use it for tires, for taking bugs off, windshield and all that stuff. And a microfiber cloth, in, which folds really, really small. And of course, shed shovel, 50 cents, dollar store. That wasn't right. Dollar, dollar store. <laughs> and uh, mosquito nets. Uh, if you're gonna be traveling somewhere that there are a lot of mosquitoes, get yourself a mosquito net and it will save your life. Most of the stuff that I have fit inside of the four boxes that I have on the bike, the two aluminum ones and the two ammo boxes in the front. And uh, everything else goes inside of my tank bag and this giant bag right here. It's a waterproof dry bag and uh, it's a German made, I believe. It's called Ortlieb. And uh, it's a very, very good quality. It's very thick, and um, it doesn't it doesn't dry out like you know a lot of other dry bags that I had. And here's the inside of it. It's giant. You can you can fit a lot of stuff in here. And uh, what I do, I usually just put my sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, all the clothes and everything goes inside of here, and it goes right onto the bike. Maybe I'm old school. I wasn't born in the era of iPad and iPods and I don't know what not, but this is what I believe. If you need a camera, get yourself a goddamn good camera. Your cell phone is not going to be a good camera. 
you can take a picture with it sure it's not going to be a good picture you're you're taking a trip of a lifetime you're taking a taking a trip to go somewhere exotic or you know to see something and you come back home with a picture that it's this big can do anything with it if you need a good video camera take a good video camera with you if you need a good motorcycle take a good motorcycle with you don't take tools that you know they advertise that they do everything they don't do anything they don't do anything right your cell phone is just this it's just a telephone there are a lot of things that make sense and there are a lot of things that they don't make sense traveling is about simplicity and uh if you can cope with that you can cope with everything for example a lot of people love camelbacks I don't know why but um, I just can't figure it out for my life they spend I don't know hundred dollars on, on a bladder to put water in it when you can buy a water bottle for I don't know for 50 cents for a dollar if you, if you go to a thrift store pick them up for 25 cents and uh, if it goes missing you're not losing anything and the good thing about it is you can open the top you can see exactly what's inside of it you can clean it you can do everything with it you can put water in it you can put peps in it you can put tea in it you can piss in it if you want to and you can still wash it and put it away with the candle bags you can do that and um same thing goes as you know a lot of different things for shoes i only have one pair of shoes with me with my combat boots i wear them for riding they're protective they're leather they're waterproof somewhat and um I can hike in them, I can, I can walk in them, I can run in them, I can do everything in them. And uh, I don't need another pair of shoes. Then I have another you know, pair of flip-flops that I take with me, which I just, when I take off my boots, I put on a flip-flops and just walk around with it. I see a lot of people that they buy $300, $400 pair of riding boots and they're not practical. I've owned them, I know that. They're not waterproof. They are uncomfortable, you can't walk in them, you feel like an astronaut and you're gonna have to have another pair of boots for hiking and another pair of boots for walking. Just take one thing with you that is just gonna work. If you want to know what brands that I take with me or you know where to buy them for the cheapest price and best price just go to our website MotorcycleMemoir.com and um, for every item pretty much there's an informative review with pictures and you know the experiences that I had with them or other people had with them and um you can read it then decide for yourself you know what's what's the best course of action that you can take and um i hope you like this video and um it help you you know for your next adventure and i'm chris sorby and thank you for watching have a great time